Hello and welcome to my third video on my part 3 Java MTA course. In this video we're going to talk about the essential concepts that you must learn about strings for the MTA exam. As always I'm going to tell you the information as quickly as possible in my key points and then I'm going to give you some questions to really cement that information down. So before we start, there are two things that you need to know before watching this video. You need to have a good idea about what the stack is and what the heap is, and what the primitive versus the reference type is. So if you don't know these questions, I would suggest looking at my playlist and watching the primitive video and the reference type video. If you do know, then let's crack on. So importantly, you need to know that a string data type is immutable. This means once created, it cannot be changed. But how can this be? Because in your code you've seen the change strings data types into multiple values. Well, what happens is we have the stack memory and we have the heap memory and we have some code. And in this code we create um, a string reference type. So we have the reference of the string and we link it up with hello. And then on line two, we use concat concatenate to create hello world. But if you look here, we've created it another version of it. So in the heap memory, we've created that hello world, but it's not the same as our hello value. So we've actually created two different um, objects, two different values in our heap memory. But if you look here, we haven't equals that we haven't equaled that value to our reference string. So we don't connect it up. So what will happen is if we print out text one, we will print out hello and we will not print out hello world. So the important thing is that actually when you create or change a value, we actually create another value in heap memory. And then our little garbage collector comes around and will dispose of any uh, any anything in our heap memory that isn't connected to a reference in our stack. So again, if we then look at how we can do it properly or how we can attach the new value to our to our reference in our stack, we first create the uh, we initialize and in, um, our variable text one with hello. So we we have our reference object and it creates hello. Then we concatenate it and then we link it back to our reference. So what that will happen is now that reference will point to hello world and our little garbage collector will come and dispose of hello. So if we print this one, that will print hello world. But again, importantly, the value does not change once it's been, uh, com once it's been created. It is immutable. What just happens is we create more vol versions and it's that link that changes. The second key concept that you need to know about strings are that there are two ways to create a string object, a string literal and a string object. Now, a string literal is what we've been creating um, in our previous videos. A string object is when we use the new keyword with string and then the brackets. Now, again, the difference between the two is where each string object is stored on the heap and therefore the way it behaves because of the difference in where it is stored. So if we think this is our stack and we create our heap memory here, our string literal has a little box within that heap memory and it's called that string literal pool. So if we look here, our text one, um, our reference for text one is put into the stack and then we've initialized our value in the heap memory with the string literal pool because we've created it in this way. Now this links up because it's a reference, so it references that object. But then if we look here, our second variable, text2, is the same value. So what will happen is text2 will search the, sing, the string literal memory pool and see if there's any matching. And if so, it will link up to the same value. So it will link them both up to the same value to save space. And that is how the string literal works. So it keeps it in a pool of memory. And what will happen is that before it creates a new um, 
object or a new value within that memory, it will check all the previous values to check to see if there's any same values. And if there is, it will link them, it will reference them to the same point. A string object works very differently. So if we have here the text three, this is this will the value will be created outside that string literal pool. So we create the goodbye value here and we link it up. And then if we create a new one, the value, even though it's the same, will create a new uh, value here. So there'll be two values here that contains the same information. And that is the difference between a string literal and a string object. It's the difference in where each object is stored on the heap. But what does that mean? Well, the behavior is slightly different and you just have to be aware of that when you're working with strings. So for example, if we say text one equals text two, this is true. Text one and text two is the same, okay? Because it points to the same location. However, in Java, text three and text four is different because the actual value is different. So if you're using a string literal and they're both the same value, you can use the equals. However, if you're using a string object and they're both the same value, this will be false. So you have to use another method to compare these two values. And that other method is what we're going to be talking about in the next video. In this video, it's just important that you have a good idea of why these two objects are different and the behavior it causes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some questions at you um, regarding some of the concepts we covered and I want you to answer them, uh, pause the video and answer them. So hopefully you've paused the video, let's go through. So number one, uh, for line 789, tell me if the variable has been declared or initialized. So we talked a little bit about this concept in the first um, video with primitive types. So number seven, we've declared that space so that that reference space has been declared. So we've created that space in stack, but we haven't initialized it because we haven't created that value yet. On line eight, we've created that value. So we've initialized that uh, variable. On line nine, we've created the uh, both the reference and the object in the heap memory. And so we've both declared and initialized that value. So we've initialized it here. At line 10, what will be printed out? Okay, so uh, if we look at text one and we're looking at the character one, again, we're gonna go into this method a little bit more in the next video. Um, what we're doing is we're just printing out the first value of text one, which is the S. So this will be outputted. If I added the following line of code at line 11, what would be printed out? Um, so again, even though we've pulled that S out here, so this will be printed out S, we haven't um, attached that to our text one reference. So even though we've pulled that S out, we haven't attached it onto it. So that text one here should still print out the full start. So number three, start will be printed out because we haven't attached that S, even though we've created it in our heap memory, we haven't attached it to our stack. Um, number four, what will be outputted on line 12, why? Well, again here, we've added, we concat, concat, it means concatenate, which means to add this value, number nine to our text one. But more importantly, we've linked it. So again, we've created a new value in our heap memory. And then here we've allowed it to be referenced in our stack memory. So then when we output it, this should be start and then nine because we've linked our stack memory up to the value that of the new value in our heap memory, which will be start nine. Good, number five, why is number one reference a reference type and not a, a primitive type? So again, um, this talks a little bit about the wrapper object and that we discussed that in the previous video. 
um, the wrapper object allows us very easily to convert between um, string, com convert our value from um, the number to a string. So we, this is an integer. This allows us to convert that integer to a string very easily, okay, because we're using a wrapper object. Again, if you're unsure about what that is, please check out my previous video about reference types. And number six, is text one a string or a string uh, literal? So is it a string object or a string literal object? Um, and the answer is a string literal. So because we've just done text one equals start, it's that string literal object. Hopefully you got the majority of the questions right. Um, the questions here covered not only this video, but um, from my previous videos, um, both the primitive and the reference type. So if you got some wrong, have a look at my playlist and uh, review some of the videos that I've made before. Um, otherwise, um, can you make sure that before you leave, um, are you able to correctly explain what immutable means? Are you able to tell me the difference between initialize and declare? And are you able to explain why is it important that string objects are immutable? Again, if you found this video useful, please like. And if you would like to um, be notified when I start making my mock exams, please subscribe to the channel and I will let you know once I put them online. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.